Why don't you tell me what you got? Sure. We're going to start out on, on the end there uh, with the Howa. That is our newer APC or Australian Precision chassis. Uh, that one was a special for fourth quarter of last year in our American flag, and literally we cannot build the things fast enough. That has been one of our most popular products without a doubt this year. Package with a scope? That is actually a complete package as you see it. 30 millimeter? Nico Sterling diamond long range, yeah. 4 to 16 power illuminated reticle scope, side focus, dual color, bipod. Uh, it's an MT Industries muzzle brake up front. It's a EGW 20 MOA rail that the scope sits on. Uh, it's in the Howl hard case with a frog lube accessory pack. MSRP is $15.99. That's quite the package that competes with a lot of the new ones that look kind of like that. Yes. <laughs> we are offering it in various calibers, 223, 6.5 Creedmoor, 308. We even have some 243 offerings, varying barrel lengths of 20, 24, and 26 inch. Wow. Uh, without a doubt, 6.5 Creedmoor has been the most popular. That is certainly the most desirable sought after caliber that we're producing right now across any of our lines. Uh, the one next to it is our HCR or how it's chassis rifle. Uh, primary difference on that one next to the APC, first starting off with the stock. They both utilize a Luth AR style stock, six position. On the HCR there, that is a MBA3 style versus the MBA-4 on the APC. Primary difference being is that the MBA-3 has a finite adjustment for length of pull uh, as well as lateral movement on the recoil pad for uh, shoulder pocket fit. Um, moving forward is where the primary difference comes into play. That chassis uh, is a full billet machined aluminum uh, that we did in conjunction with Accurate Mag. So that takes any standard AICS compatible magazine where the APC utilizes our proprietary ammo boost magazine. Coming down next to that is our new KRG Bravo. And the black stock on the cover of our catalog this year is the KRG as you see it. We're offering it also in a tan stock as well. That is a full aluminum spine that runs down fully free-floated barrel, two-piece KRG stock system. Kind of an ambidextrous setup with a more of a vertical down grip posture. Um, once again, standard AICS compatible magazines on that as well. Um, popular offerings this year, still the 6.5 Creedmoors are, are most common. We now expand it out to the 6mm Creedmoor as well in that, uh, as well as 308, 300 wind mag. Uh, coming down next to that is our GRS uh, rifle, uh, conjunction correct, the GRS adjustable stock system on that for comb height and length of pull adjustment. Also has on the back side of the stock going to be points for a single point sling attachment. A lot of uh, long range precision shooters, competition shooters on tripods, especially like on the cover of our catalog, are utilizing that style of single point attachment for a good anchor point. So that is standard. Uh, that one is a internal box magazine with a hinge floor plate. Uh, certainly could be accessorized with our ammo boost magazine kits if you wanted to make it a detachable style. Next to that one, new for this year, is our new mini action chassis. So that is based upon our sporter mini action, virtually a full inch shorter vaulted chamber than our standard short action. Does this come in 6.5 uh, five Rindle? That's five what Rindle. my sample is. Awesome. Current offerings right now are 223, 762 by 39, and my 6.5 Grendel, which is what that sample is. By end of summer, beginning of fall, we should have it available in a 300 blackout. 
which will be a 16 inch barrel configuration only. What's that go for as a package? Uh, as you see it, it, we don't do it as a scope package, it is a rifle only package. So for rifle only black is $11.99. For Cerakote in a multi-cam FDE like my HCR sample is $13.99. That would be a really nice handy rifle and Grendel. You know, yes, that. it really <laughs> is. And just that short action, I mean, it's slightly longer than a 22 mag or 17 HMR throw would be on the bolt. Um, there is talk that by year's end, we should have that available in a 450 Bushmaster. And by 2019, beginning of 2019, to 24 Valkyrie. Now, the, the Grendel ballistics are about the same as the old 6555 Swedish Mauser, aren't they? Correct. That is a viable 1,000 yard round in, in that 6.5 Grendel. But they were pretty accurate. The ballistic coefficient on those things were ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously a round designed by Alexander Arms to be more of a AR platform, if you will. Um, we started offering it in the 6.5 Grendel last year through our standard mini action sporter. Um, but a lot of companies this year have decided to utilize that round in a bolt action platform as well. Um, coming down next is our Hogue rifle that I have set up with one of our Nico Sterling scopes. Um, that is a heavy barrel, number six configuration. Uh, probably one of our most popular models. Uh, the Hogue rifle accounts for a large percentage of our sales. Uh, they are available in a 20 inch number one sporter, a 22 inch number two sporter, or a 24 number six sporter as you see in my sample there. Um, Hogue overmold stock in green or black rubber configurations. Uh, coming down next to that, one of our specials is the Cryptic Full Dip. We actually own our own company, RCH Reno Cerakote and Hydrographics. Uh, they do all of our Cerakoting, all of our dips. So that is something we control in the factory in-house in Reno. So they do the Cerakote or do the dip, move it to the next part of the factory where it is assembled. For us, everything in the Howell line starts as a barreled action first. And then depending upon what stock configuration it is going into, the gunsmith then pulls the appropriate parts that are necessary to put it all together assembles it on the bench, boxes it, and sends it out. Um, this is my Mini Action Sporter sample. That is a package as you see it with the Panamax. This one happens to be in a 223 uh, with the 22 inch number two Sporter. Great, great little round. Um, especially for women and youth, it is the perfect action and, and caliber offerings in that. Um, Next to that is our new model this year. It's our HS Precision stock. Um, the sample I have shows our kind of standard configuration of a 22-inch number two sport. Pretty much all standard short and long action calibers. Uh, we do offer it in two Magnum calibers of a 7 rem and a 300 wind mag as well. Makes it a 24-inch barrel configuration. Uh, and then for a true long range precision gun, um, we are offering it in select calibers in a number four semi heavy barrel that's a 26 inch. So in the HS precision stock, there is a full aluminum spine that runs from the tip of this forend to the wrist of the stock. Never and changed. then the fiberglass molded over, over that. that. Yep. Uh, we're offering that in three different colors as well. The tan that you see, uh, slightly darker green, as well as a gray. What's the price on this one? Uh, MSRP on the 22 inch, the way you see it, is $1,099. Moving on. Moving on to our absolute bread and butter. The, the rifle that accounts for the majority of Howa sales. That is our Howa Game King package. Uh, once again, that is in essence a Hogue rifle. Starts out as a Hogue rifle and then gets our Nico Sterling Game King scope and rings added to the top of it. Um, available once again in all standard short and long action calibers, uh, black or green stock. 
Coming down from there moves us into our Lithgow Arms line of rifles, line from Australia. Um, Lithgow has actually been producing military Enfields for the British and Australian government since 1912. <laughs> In 2013, they decided to kind of get into the civilian market. So on the 101st anniversary of the company, they introduced the LA-101, the Rimfire series. 22 long rifle, 17 HMR, which is what my sample is, and a 22 Magnum. Available in both a black synthetic or laminate stock. A year later, they decided to get into the LA-102, which is a center fire line. Uh, the one sample I don't have new for this year is the LA-105, Woomera. That is our long-range precision Lithgow in a KRG stock. That's a nice looking gun. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It is a true, true piece of art. It is considered crossover series. Uh, it's a slightly heavy sporter, if you will, um, hunting rifle, yet heavy enough to be utilized as a bench rest, hence the integral rear rest hook in both the models there. Threaded cap standard, and actually even on the Howell line now for 2018 and beyond, anything that we offer in a number four or a number six heavy barrel automatically comes threaded cap. Notice you have some bridged scope mounts. I'm sorry. I do notice you have some of the bridged scope mounts. Yes. Uh, standard for us now is in the EGW line that you're seeing in the blue model. Um, in a zero MOA or a 20 MOA, short action, long action, and even our mini action, which is what I have for my sample there. So this is part of your accessory line. Yes, through that one on the on the stainless model is a Nico Sterling line that we were offering the one piece. Um, we do have what we call zero lock integrals now, like you're seeing on the full dip, that utilizes an integral base and ring in one inch and thirty millimeter. Uh, our diamond series of scopes, like you see set up on my APC or here on my how uh, or the uh, Hogue heavy barrel always utilizes a 30 millimeter tube so versus the one inch both. and then there are one inch available um, target masters correct in the target master uh, in the Panamex line which is the standard scope on the um, mini action that would be a one inch as well the mount masters that I have set up on some of them are also a one inch you want to give a pitch for 30 versus the one inch Certainly, it comes down to light, it light gathering capability. That 30 millimeter tube certainly gathers a little bit more light. Do you get a little um, more range? Yeah, you do. You're you're opening up your field of view, but most guys are looking at that as certainly a light gathering capability. Your objective is a key part of that, but you can kind of narrow down, minimize your objective size by opening up the tube diameter. So. That's why we don't need to go as big in an objective on our diamond series line. Because of the... Because diameter. it's a 30 millimeter tube. Range of view. It should be, I believe, it's a 60 minute uh, of angle, full range. For okay. elevation and windage. Yeah, like 70 is loophole territory. 120 yeah. is crazy. Yeah. And actually this year on... Uh, which sample do I, I think I have it set up on my HC line? What is it? No, on my carriage. We are offering this year a first focal point scope model as you know probably most scopes that you're going to encounter I'm are thinking about guns <laughs> okay I know chainsaws. most scopes and most of the ones i have set up here are second focal points that's the most common where your uh, uh, crosshairs are going to say static through a given magnification range yeah that's a scope uh, design characteristic yes yeah. on a first focal plane we're changing that we are now changing the size of the crosshairs and the reticle through the given magnification range. Um, what that'll help do is assess target sizes, distance at given ranges. So the howes are built in Japan. What about the scopes? On our Mountmaster series that is Japanese components assembled in China 
on our Panamex. But the glass is Japanese? Yes, on our Panamex, Target Master, and Diamond series, they are Japanese components assembled in Japan. Lifetime warranty on, on any of those. Actually, on any of the Howa products, if you look at some of the tags, they are all a lifetime warranty to the original owner and a sub MOA guaranteed 100 yards with factory ammunition. They are shooters. They are definitely shooters. I don't remember how was when they were Weatherbees, and then I remember when they were they are Smith the and Wesson. They are the only other company <laughs> that is legally allowed to use a Howa receiver. Action is Weatherbee. That's what's in the Vanguard. Coming down through, I have a couple of my Escort shotguns on display here. Our M87 series pump action, and next to that our Supreme Magnum semi-auto. Full gas operating system here. On the pointer series next to it uh, is our 1000 series field over and under. Uh, that's available in all standard 12, 20, 28, 410 gauges. Uh, and actually, I have to get it out now that you see that. Uh, we also offer a brake action single shot in that line as well as semi auto. Coming down then to our Citadel line of 1911s. Uh, these are all basically a Colt Series 70. And they're made in the former Colt plant in the Philippines. Oh my god. They are available in either a full size or an officer size and in a 9mm or 45 ACP. One of the ones that we did special for this year again and in line with our APC American flag is the American flag 1911. We're currently doing that in our 9mm and our 45. Comes with an upgrade of the G10 grips. Still has the original wood grips uh, included in the case. MSRP is $950. That's not a bad price. Beaver tail. You can't see the hammer, but it's got a skeletonized hammer. Correct. Skeletonized hammer, skeletonized trigger, fully adjustable. Any idea of what kind of trigger poundage pull? Roughly most of mine are breaking in that four and a half to five pound range. Wow. Very nice stuff. Thank you. Is there any tech geek uh, questions that I should ask or these guys should ask? Yeah, I mean, one of the probably the thing I find the most that most people don't know about our product um, comes down to the bolt design itself. Okay. We are utilizing a long M16 style extractor on the bolt. All Howa bolts are a toolless takedown. That's awesome. For cleaning purposes. Um, the bolt handle itself is actually machined into the body of the bolt. It is not welded or added on later. Therefore, that bolt handle actually in the battery down lock position acts as a third locking lug in conjunction with the two lugs up front. There are three vent holes machined into the bolt body itself. That is meant in the case of an overpressure primer blowout to vent the pressure down into the magazine well instead of out the back of the bolt body. And for any of us who have experienced a primer blowout like I have, you caught primer pieces into your face. I was going to say, you still got know, your eyes. We know that safety glasses always. All of our Howa products utilize what we call a hacked or Howa actuator control trigger group. It is a two-stage trigger, all right? Three-position safety, fully back, locks the gun down safe. Mid-position allows for bolt open, but safe, all is fire. We have stage one is roughly a light one pound take up to engage the sear. Stage two is a clean, crisp break. All of my samples broke at roughly two and a half to three pounds. Fully adjustable down to roughly a pound and a half, upwards of five. And even in our lift out line, here we have kind of a modified three position. Sometimes people look at it, it's like a Winchester style, let's say, position. 
we have slightly modified it from the standpoint that straight back is actually is allowed for the bolt to open but yet safe mid position is complete lockdown of the gun fully forward is fire and bolt open reason being we didn't want somebody to accidentally blow past mid position on that one and accidentally discharge thinking it was safe um, these Lithgow's are super super sweet it's a large three lug locking system oversized bolt design it is a truly honed cylindrical cylinder titanium coated threaded knob you could take this off if you wanted to to add on it's kind of a tactical knob or what have if you will now have available for this year a tactical bolt knob certainly designed to fit into the pocket of any of our Howard products. It uses Liza's three screws. The two halves come up, lays in, Allen key included, tighten down, and then turn it into a tactical Of course, the place around here where these are available is down in Marathon, New York, correct? Correct. Johnson Motors and Guns, yeah. who was gracious enough to support us today, <laughs> set this whole event up for me to come out. Please make sure you stop down to see Darren or Amy if you have any other questions. So is there anything else uh, you think would be of interest to people looking at these Howa guns? Come on down and shoot them. That's the best way to really learn the most about these. I find that most of the times people may not be as familiar with our product as some of the other companies out there. But once they've had the gun in their hand, they are, they are more than impressed. No, I remember years ago there were shooters... And, and they sure, still are. They still are. And they still are. Well, thank you very, very much for thank your you. time. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.